If you were like me, there may have been a couple things you were uncertain about before starting your very first day at the University of St. Augustine. From dress code, to textbooks, to equipment, so where do I find housing? Well, in this video, we're gonna dive into all that and I'm gonna give you my personal thoughts on each of those topics. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ben Kim and I'm currently an SPT at the University of St. Augustine in my eighth term. And today, we have a video for all of you incoming first-termers so you'll know what clothes you need to buy, what textbooks you're gonna need, what equipment you need to buy, and how to find housing. So I'm gonna just start by summarizing what USA's paragraph says about men's lecture code. They want you to wear a collared shirt with length that could be tucked into or remain your pants, casual dress pants or shorts. Uh, you can also wear jeans, and then closed toed shoes or dress sandals. So basically, if you want, you can wear a polo, button down t-shirt or button down sh long sleeve shirt, whatever you want. And then your casual dress pants, that's kind of like your golf pants or like more professional athleisure wear. More professional shorts are also accepted, but not too many people that I've seen actually wear those. And then closed toe shoes or dress sandals, according to their website, USA considers that like a Birkenstock. For the women, also the same thing, but they also include a section for blouses, um, they for long sleeve blouses, but if not, shorts okay, as long as it's what USA is calling professional looking. And then the interesting thing is no yoga pants. And this is what I'll say. So disclaimer, this is from 2019 when I was on campus before this whole COVID uh, pandemic started. With yoga pants, it's been a debate, even like between staff. University of St. Augustine is composed of multiple campuses. Staff meet up, talk about the dress code. There are a lot of staff that are for it, and then there are some that are not. What I will say, just from my experience, is I have seen a lot of people or a lot of ladies wear yoga pants throughout the term, and they were fine. And I'll also say that at least for the San Marcos campus when I was there. The school's pretty lenient with the dress code, as especially as the term went on. PT school's tough, it's very stressful, people wanna be comfy. I mean, of course, dress or impress, look your best, you're at a professional school. But there are times, you know, when you wanna dress comfier. And so, USA is actually pretty lenient for the most part through dress code, as long as you're still looking clean and somewhat professional. One thing that I like to do as we were going through the term, I wouldn't always wear a collared shirt, but I would have like a collared Patagonia USA sweatshirt or a collared North Face jacket or something of the sort. That way, underneath, you can really do whatever you want, just as comfy as you want, and there won't be any problem. I found this pic from 2019, back when it was pre-COVID, and we we're all in a lunchroom. So let's take a look at this picture that I found back in 2019 before the whole pandemic started. So looking at this photo, we can see people dressed in polos, blouses, even just regular t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets. And then towards the left, we see people dress uh, more professionally. You got like the polos tucked into the dress pants and whatnot. So really it's a variety. You could dress how you want, as long as it's somewhat professional, just don't stress out too much about it. All right, now let's move into lab wear. So according to USA's website, they want clean, solid, colored gym shorts and t-shirts. For women in a lot of these classes, you're also gonna need a sports bra that unclasps in the back. And also for some classes, you will need scrubs. All USA requires is a matching color pair of scrubs. My take on this is I haven't ever seen anyone with a problem with their gym attire. Just make sure that it's professional, just nothing vulgar on it, and you should be fine there. As for women and their sports bras, you're gonna need one that unclasps in the back. There's a lot of classes where we work on massage techniques or manipulations or whatever it is, and it's around the shoulder blades or it's around your back. So definitely make sure you have that. On to Cadaver Lab. This is gonna be on your first and second term. So for Cadaver lab you're gonna want a dedicated pair of scrubs just for this class especially if you're heavily involved in this lab you're gonna get a lot of cadaver juice on you and so I would recommend having one or two designated pair of scrubs just for this class and of course you don't want to spend a lot of money on these you don't need those fancy fig scrubs for this this is more like your scrubs that you use and you throw away once you're done with this class the scrubs I used were my old Dickies scrubs I bought off Amazon and that I used to use when I was an aide. In Cadaver Lab, you're also gonna need goggles, and I would recommend you get either Tiger Balm or Peppermint Oil. I don't know about you guys, smells really affect me, especially the formaldehyde. At times, it would make me lightheaded, and thankfully, the professors would let me go out on a walk halfway through, or anytime I needed to really just get, get a breath of fresh air. But let me tell you, Tiger Balm, 
peppermint oil, swipe under the nose right before you go in. Helps out an incredible amount. You're welcome for that tip. It took me about a whole turn before I even realized how helpful Tiger Balm was. All right, lastly, practical wear. So for those of you who don't know, practicals are the exams where they test your hands-on skills. So this is where you gotta pretend like you're actually in the clinic. And so what they want you to wear for most of these practicals is either lecture attire or lab attire, depending on the class. Because for some classes, you're working with a partner and at one point you're gonna to need to be the patient. So imagine taking knee measurements or special tests on the knee as a patient, you're gonna to wanna to be wearing shorts. And so that's when you'd be wearing gym attire for other Practicals where maybe it's like a patient care management practical, you don't really need those landmarks exposed. So then you'll be wearing either scrubs or you'll be wearing lecture attire. Either way, for all these practicals, they're gonna want you to have your white coat on top of this, which brings us to the point of buying a white coat. So you can choose to either buy a cheap lab coat or what I would recommend is buying a nice white coat to start with and then this white coat is, can be your actual white coat during the white coat ceremony and at the time before the ceremony you'll just get the University of St. Augustine patch embroider that on if you want I'm sure you can get your name embroidered as well and there's your white coat so for a professional nice looking white coat that looks like one fit for doctors not one fit for chemists you can find it right here I found it on Amazon I'll also link it down below um, but yeah, me and a lot of other guys from the cohort got this. It's a very nice looking coat. I'll put up a picture of some of our white coat photos as well so you can get a good idea of what it actually looks like. All right, so that should cover everything regarding dress code. Let's move on to textbooks. So I'm sure you already looked at the textbook list and the school has told you that all textbooks are required, but do you actually need to buy all these textbooks? The answer is no. Unless you are really, really a textbook person, you want these in hand, then fine. But from my experience, that answer is no. All the textbooks that you actually need are in PDF form and are usually passed down from class to class. So if you're not a heavy textbook person, you can go through PDFs, which is actually useful because you just control find a lot of stuff then save yourself the hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The upper termers will send your class the PDFs. However, there is one text that we did need in the first term and that was Grant's dissector. It's gonna be what guides you through your dissections for the cadaver lab. So if there's any textbook that you grab, make sure that you grab that one. For the upcoming 2022, it looks like they're requiring the 17th edition for you guys. I'll link the 16th and 17th edition for you guys down below. Both should fork fine. All right, with textbooks out the way, the next thing is equipment. So you guys also got the equipment list. If you guys don't know about it yet, this is what it looks like right here. According to the website, it says the following equipment is required for first semester courses. Is that true? Not all of it. You are gonna need all of these, however, at some point from term one through term six. And honestly, you might even end up using some of this during your clinicals as well. Now, I do have some recommendations. We talked about the lab coat already. I would just get the nice one right away and just make one lab coat purchase because I didn't do that. And now I have a lab coat that, and I never even use that. It's, it's kind of a waste of money and space. As for gate belts, I personally prefer the cloth gate belts. I just didn't really like how hard and unflexible the blue vinyl gate belts were. So, so I would definitely just stick with the cloth gate belt. And one thing that I would recommend that you get that's actually not on this list is a treatment table. Especially during the pandemic, you're gonna want your own table and not one that's used by maybe 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 people throughout the day. And having a treatment table actually gives you a lot of freedom. You can practice whenever, wherever, very portable and now you don't have to drive all the way to school just to practice. I would also look into getting your own nice massage lotion because there are a couple classes where you will need lotion for manual skills. And if you're a practice whenever or wherever, you're gonna need to grab your own massage lotion as well. And for all the items that we talked about, I'll leave a link down below in the description box so you can get my recommendations for each of these pieces of equipment. And last but not least, housing. Once I got accepted into the program, this is probably one of the biggest questions I had. And so here it is. Once you get accepted, you'll be added to two Facebook pages. The first one is the USA HS San Marcos, and then your term. So if you're like in the spring, it'll be spring 2022, purple class. Each class has its own color. And the other page will be the USA HS housing slash roommates dash, and they'll say your campus location. So for, so for ours, it was the San Marcos California campus. And so let's start out with your term class. And so for us, it was the fall 2019 red class. And this is going to have all the people that got accepted in your cohort, not just in the DPT, but also OT. 
So this is how you know who is in your cohort. And then now for the next page, which is the housing and roommates page, this is where everyone posts like their housing listing. But what I would recommend is first looking at the USAHS housing and roommates, see what listings there are if you're interested in a house. Sometimes a lot of people in the same cohort live together, they graduate, they all move out and now then there could be a house with multiple rooms open or if not all the rooms open. Find one of those listings and then you can talk to some people from your cohorts page, start adding them as a friend, messaging them, see who you vibe well with or see if anyone is looking for housing and they can start getting a group together that way. On top of that, there are also apartment listings on that Facebook page as well. But if you also wanna go your own route, you wanna start your own place, what you can do is you can find an apartment that you like. Once you find that, I would recommend posting that in your cohorts page because ideally you would want to live with someone in the same cohort unless you already know that person beforehand. Some of the benefits to living with someone in your same cohort is that you're learning the same stuff at the same time. You guys can bounce ideas, bounce questions. And when you guys want to practice stuff, you guys want to practice stuff at the same time because you guys have your exams at the same time. Whereas maybe sometimes you're living with someone in another cohort, you guys have different priorities because you got maybe this test on this day and your housemate has a different test on a different day. And so you guys are practicing different things, but you still need to practice on each other, which could make things kind of difficult. Some of the more common apartments in San Marcos are the Mark or Palomar Station. These are your more upper tier, lots of amenity type of apartments. And if you don't care so much about the amenities, there are places that are a little cheaper, like the Barham Villas or Tuscany Hills. What I will say though, is that if you are looking to save money, the house is probably the way to go. Try to find a house that has four or five bedrooms, split that between a bunch of guys or ladies, and you end up saving a lot of money that way. But if you're someone who can't take a lot of noise, can't take a lot of people being over, because in PT school, people are gonna come over, or maybe if you're just a light sleeper, you can't handle people, then the apartment route might be the way for you. Last piece of advice I have for you guys, do not be late for anatomy class. Hear me out now, do not be late for anatomy class, especially if you're on the San Marcos campus. But that's pretty much it for all you need to know before your first day of PT school. Links to all my recommended equipment are down below. If you guys choose to purchase from those links, thank you for supporting the channel. If there are any questions that you still have that I have missed, make sure to put them down below in the comment section. I'm sure a lot of other people would like to know too. If you guys like the music, that's also in the description box. Run it up for the algorithm one time, and I'll catch y'all on the next. It's the hurricane, it's gonna break my turn. Too many snakes, bitches acting like the maid. Think of Versace on their head, now nah, you lose a babe. Call me Percy, you be heading these fakes. We ones no, I ain't taking no breaks. Grants it to my body aches, mindset to my memory breaks. You don't want me seeing red, I gon' make you make amends. I see how you slay the heads, I hit everywhere, amen. I ain't even go to church, but I pray God is watching.